Hello and welcome to Five Questions with Eric Lopez. I'm Ejiro. I am a campus ambassador for Let's Detroit. And today's topic is all about networking and how to use that to land a job. So I thought who better to interview than Eric Lopez. I have a little bio about Eric Lopez before we get started. So Eric is from a small town called Kerman in Central Valley of California, but currently calls Seattle his home. He went to undergrad at UC Santa Barbara, where he got a degree in sociology and a minor in Black Studies. He has his master's in education from Student Development Administration from Seattle University, and he is currently the senior program manager at Get Schooled. And Get Schooled is a national organization all about helping students find jobs, get to college, and succeed in both. They were founded uh, through a partnership in 2009, I believe. Um, they were founded through a partnership through Viacom and also the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So some big shoes up there, and they're doing great work mm -hmm. all over the country um, helping students. Um, so yeah, I have Eric here. How are you feeling today, Eric? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Excited to be here. Yes, excited to have you. So I'm just going to jump into our first question. So Eric, what was your first job? My first job was in high school. I was 17 years old and I worked at the McDonald's in my hometown of Kerman, California. I worked there for about a year before going to college. Awesome. Okay. I know McDonald's is like a first job for a lot of people too, so that's super relatable. Um, so what are the boss moves you made post-college and maybe after your first job that you believe landed you where you are today? Yeah. So for me, my first job post-college was at my college I, at UC Santa Barbara. I worked in housing as an undergrad, and so I was able to network, and I was offered an opportunity just based on that network that I had created um, as an undergrad student working in the housing department, where I worked full-time doing student leadership work. I was an assistant student leadership coordinator, and it was a one-year position, which is perfect because I wanted to go to grad school, and I wanted something that would, like, push me in that direction. And so a year position was really perfect. But during that year, um, I think like the boss moves that I made um, were definitely just building my, like taking advantage of that year that I had access to a lot of professionals around me that did what I wanted to do. So based on my experience, I always say I really loved college. So I wanted to work at a college as my career. And so I really spent that year like intentionally like um, you know, booking one-on-one -on -one lunches with people, informational interviews with folks that did grad programs that I wanted to do. And so I think that through that, well, you know, I already had access to a bunch of people that I was working with. And um, did I have relationships with all of them? No, but I really used that year to cultivate that. And so through that, I learned about a lot of the grad programs that I ended up applying to, and I eventually went to one of them. And so through that network, <clears throat> when I got to grad school, I already had like a foundational knowledge and kind of like an in with some people based on those relationships that I had cultivated ahead of time. You know, I moved from Santa Barbara up to Seattle and I didn't know a single person. And so I think those networking that I did like really helped lay like a foundation where I felt kind of like, okay, confident in moving to another state and being okay with like not, you know, knowing someone. And so I think, yeah, I think those are the things that I just really take advantage of building those relationships during that year, knowing that there was like an end time. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I can definitely relate to the building connections before you move thing because I'm a transfer student, transferred from Michigan State to Western, was reaching out, you know, to professors, Hill, uh, faculty. Um, so it was nice to already have those connections and people like looking out for me before I actually arrived here. Um, so yeah, going into our next question, what advice do you have for students building their network? Maybe first gen or students who feel like they're starting from scratch? Yeah, so I think that um, when when people first think of like the word network or building a network, it becomes really, really overwhelming because you're like, I have to go to a networking event and I have to go and like talk to a bunch of people at the career center, you know, talk to faculty and administrators. And while that is building a network, I think that it, I think dissecting it down a little bit is really, really helpful. So like, you know, a first year student in college, like your network is already like your RA, right? Like your resident assistant in college, like that is part of your network. And so building a relationship, you know, with them and then having them connect you with someone, you know, like, hey, I'm really interested in majoring in this field. Do you know anyone? Do you have any friends or anyone that I could talk to you to learn a little bit more about that major? And so I think like really breaking it down um, and thinking about networking differently. Um, thinking about the things that you have access to, right? Every first year student in college has 
an orientation advisor, you have an academic advisor, you know, that's a built in relationship already that you can really leverage. And so you're, you know, you might be required to do academic advising sessions. And so using that opportunity in that academic advising session with being, again, being really intentional and communicating with them, like, this is what I want to do post college, right? Um, especially if you're enrolled as a first generation student in like a educational opportunity program or trio or something like those people want to help you and that's their job <laughs> to help you and so really take advantage of that let them know what you want to do and with that like you already have an entry point that can connect you with other people and so i think that like i said networking sometimes seems really overwhelming but when you break it down like who do i have access to already through the things that i have like as a student and how can i leverage that to like make it work for me and I think it's a more organic way instead of like thinking like I have to go to this big networking event. Yeah, that's so true. Um, and another thing that a lot of people encounter um, is imposter syndrome. I don't know if you've encountered it. I encountered it when I had my first job and took a gap year. Um, so if you encountered imposter syndrome when intentionally setting out to take ownership of your career um, and what you wanted it to be, um, what are some ways that you overcame it and do you have any tips for students? Yeah, so like what I just said right now about building a network, I did not see it that way. Like, this is something that I've come to learn as I've gotten older and I've gotten into advising students more and supporting students through my role. Um, I definitely encountered imposter syndrome. I think that there's like, um, you know, I'm a first generation student. I was raised by a single mom, low income households. Like I didn't have access to, you know, these like professional networks. And so for me, um, I also, I think there's a layer of, um, I was kind of like taught to just accept any job, keep your head down, do your job, you know, that type of thing. And coming from a culture where like you really are like socialized not to talk about yourself or, you know, that's like that really values humility. It becomes really challenging to kind of like think about that when you're um, networking and dealing with imposter syndrome. And so I think that's going back to what I said in my previous or your previous question is just like you already have like a built-in network as like a student, as an employee that you have access to, whether it's like your immediate supervisor, academic advisor, RA, whatever it may be. Um, and then just really leaning into those relationships. I think for me, it's like, it took a lot of like literally telling myself that like I do belong in particular spaces and like I do, um, I worked hard. Um, and while that looks differently with how I got here and like the systems that I had to navigate through in order to get here, um, you know, that's a skill set within itself, right? That's a form of capital that, you know, people who maybe like were connected to people automatically, like I I learned that it's a skill set and like really lean into it. And so, um, yeah, lean into the networks and the relationships that are already there for you is going to be key. Love that. Literally, just love everything. Um, so this brings us to our final question. This went by so fast. Um, any last pieces of advice to students or resources to take advantage of when it comes to not only building your network, but leveraging it to land a job? So whether it's LinkedIn, informational interviews, like you mentioned earlier, yeah. any last pieces of advice that you have for students? Yeah, I, I think, like I said, like you have those like built in relationships. So like, think about that first. And then also think about like, be very intentional about when you're asking to be connected to people like, um, you know, I'm a very like values driven person, a really like mission driven person. And so I want to be connected to people that have like similar values to me. And so take that into consideration as you're um, asking to be connected to folks. It's like who here shares similar identities to me, similar experiences to me. I think that would be a lot more helpful um, in, if you're like thinking about getting into a particular career, going down a particular path. You're like, what is it like for me as like a queer person of color to go into the higher education field? You know, like I want to be connected to people that have those salient identities. So think about that. And also in terms of like building your networking, uh, building your network is also like maintaining it. And so once you are connected to people, like maintaining that relationship is really important. So like if you build a connection that you know will be beneficial to you down the line, don't ghost them for two years and then be like, hey, I know we had like coffee a couple of times and I'm applying to this job and I really like would love to have you as a reference. Like that is also like, like you know, not ideal. So you want to make sure that you're like, and then building or maintaining the relationship looks different, you know, like, it doesn't have to be anything like we have to meet every couple months. It could be like an email update, a quick message on LinkedIn saying like, hey, look, what are you up to? I saw you got a new job. Congratulations. Like that kind of building or maintaining is what I mean. And I think that'll help you leverage those relationships later down the line. And so connect to people that align with your values. Make sure that you're maintaining those relationships because that's going to be really important. And I think that 
also helps build authentic relationships where it's not just like, what can you do for me? But it's more like reciprocal. Um, and then just leveraging those um, so that you, when the time comes and you need to um, access that particular relationship, it's already been maintained and it's organic and easy. So yeah. Love it. So connect, maintain, and leverage, or build, maintain, leverage, CML or BML if you need an acronym. So this has been our time with Eric Lopez. I know you want more because I want more. To find out more about the great work that Get Schooled is doing, visit their website, getschooled.com, and also lesdetroit.com. We're always here for you. Thanks so much, Eric, for your time today. I'll see you next time. I'm Ajiro, and this has been Eric Lopez. Thank you.